This video will save you 10 or more entire years of your life from being wasted. And the reason I know this is because we spend an ungodly amount of time on our phones. The average person spends four hours a day, every single day, staring at this thing. And you might be thinking, but Maxwell, you literally just said it was the average. Four hours a day is the average, the normal. That's not even that much, right? But when you do the math and you add up the hours, it becomes very apparent to how much four hours a day on your phone really is. Four hours a day on your phone is the equivalent to 1,460 hours a year. And I know that number probably doesn't mean anything to you, but if I assume you live to 80 years old and I subtract the, what, 13 years you didn't have a phone, then you're gonna end up spending 11.5 years years of your entire life spent on your phone. Bro, 11 and a half years is a long ass time just to be spent. The magnitude of that is insane. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill. So if you would have spent just 10%, just 10% of that time in the future, you spend it working on a skill, developing a skill, you would have mastered that skill still. You would have become really, really good at something. A few weeks ago, I made some changes to my phone that have greatly impacted the amount of time I spend on my phone and have greatly increased my productivity. And coming from someone who did spend the four, five hours a day on my phone, I'm telling you that these changes will help you spend less than an hour a day on your phone. And I know that probably sounds crazy to most of you, and you might think that an hour a day on your phone is extremely low, but if you are consistently intentional and mindful about the time you spend on your phone, you will be able to get there. You will have saved and regained nine or more years of your life. And those are nine years that would have been spent scrolling and doing things that didn't bring you any value. So here are the seven changes that I made to my phone that have helped me spend less than an hour a day on my phone every single day. The first step is a very simple one, and it's just to turn on silent mode. There's that little button on the side of the phone that you can turn on so that you don't get any unnecessary dings or pop-up notifications, things that you don't need. Because if you are trying to be focused or if you're doing something that requires focus or attention or presence, like if you're with your family or you're doing work or you're doing homework, you need to be focused. I almost never turn off the do not disturb or silent mode on my phone. The only time that I do is if I need my parents to send me a message or they need to be able to contact me. Other than that, I have it on almost all the time. It's a really great way to stop yourself from getting randomly distracted when you're doing something you should have presence while doing, that you should be focused while doing. The second step is to delete all the apps that you spend the most time on. And I'm guessing these are gonna be the apps that are like TikTok and YouTube and Snapchat and mobile games. This step is the most important one. Out of all the other steps, if you just do one, do this step. But it is the most difficult because the apps that you spend the most time on obviously are gonna be the ones you are most attached to. You can come up with as many excuses and copes as you like, but the truth is, this is the one thing that will reduce the amount of time you spend on your phone the most. Now the third step that goes right along with the last step I just told you about is to delete all of the apps from your homepage. I only have four apps on my home screen and I really only need two of them because I just use them to message my family and my friends. Everything that you know might be problematic, delete it from your home page. It forces you to be a lot more intentional and mindful when you are on your phone and not to just randomly and mindlessly open an app without thinking about it. The fourth step and all the steps after this are gonna be in the settings app. And the first setting you should change is your notifications. Turn the notifications off for all of your apps, all of the ones that you don't use, all the ones that you really don't want notifications on anyways. Because a lot of the notifications that you get just notify you about useless, unimportant things. It's information that you don't need. If there are some apps that you need to keep on for health purposes or to stay connected with your family or whatever, that's fine. But what I even did with my messages app and the other apps where I receive messages from people is I turned off all of the notifications that you get from your front screen. You can do this by going to a specific app in notifications and turning off all the front page notifications that it gives you. And if that app is something that you wanna know how many notifications you have, you can just keep on the badges. This will keep that red circle over the app that will show you how many unread messages you have. The fifth and sixth step kind of go together and it's to turn off tap to wake and rise to wake. You can find raise to wake through display and brightness and you can find tap the wake through accessibility and then going to touch. You've probably noticed how your phone will instantly turn on if you pick it up. This makes it super easy to subconsciously open your phone without thinking about it. So turning raise to wake off makes sure that your phone doesn't turn on when you pick it up. Turning tap to wake off makes it so that you can't tap your phone to unlock it. Both of these two ways of unlocking your phone are very mindless and unintentional. Once you turn these two settings off, you're gonna realize that you're gonna be trying to tap your phone to open it, but it will only open if you click the side button. This will 
will make you think about going on your phone when you go on your phone, which will make you go on it less. The seventh and final step is to turn on the grayscale color filter. You can find this by going to accessibility and then going to display and text sizes. This last one might seem kind of weird, kind of extreme, but it makes your phone just so much less interesting. When you have the grayscale filter on and there's no color, it's a lot harder for you to stay on your phone for long periods of time. It's less interesting. And I know this setting in particular will be very difficult for some people to keep on because we're so used to so much sensory stuff right in your face. And so when you look at your phone and there's no color, it seems very, very boring, very, very uninteresting. It's going to be annoying and weird and boring, which means you're going to spend less time on your phone. So those are the seven changes that I made to my phone that helped me not get lost in that void. And like I said in the beginning of this video, this isn't going to be easy. This isn't going to be fast. It's going to take time for you to reduce the amount of time you spend on your phone. And these settings are probably going to feel really weird and really annoying at first, but just stick with them. And something else I want to mention is to get the Chrome extension unhooked for YouTube. I've had it for probably a year now, and it saved me hours and hours of time from being wasted on YouTube. Something else that you can do if you have a Windows computer is turn off show desktop items. You can do this by going to the front page of your computer and right clicking on it, and then going to view and then clicking off show desktop items. If you're one of the 20% that actually went and turned on all of these settings, you should be proud of yourself. This is going to hugely increase your productivity and help you make so much more progress in whatever you're working towards. And remember, never stop improving. You'll be grateful for it later.